Welcome, and thank you for joining us this afternoon as we officially welcome head coach Robert Sala. We will hear from Christopher Johnson and Coach Sala before taking questions for Mr. Johnson, Joe Douglas, and Coach. When we begin the question portion, please use the raised hand button at the bottom of your screen to be added to the queue. You will receive an on-screen notification to unmute your line. Please state your name, organization, and who your question is directed to before asking your question. With that, I will turn it over to Mr. Johnson. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us. We set out to conduct a thorough interview process with a number of very qualified and talented candidates. I want to thank them for their time. It was a privilege getting to know each one of you. When we met with Robert, I was struck by his presence. He displayed an ability to engage with us in a virtual interview. He also clearly communicated a version of a vision rather of this team that aligns with ours. When we met in person, it validated everything we believed following our initial meeting. Robert has shown through his journey here that he is a leader, one that will engage the entire team and will partner with Joe to continue building the culture of a winning organization. He has consistently demonstrated the ability to innovate, motivate, and collaborate. His character and passion are what this team needs. I am proud to welcome Robert, his wife, Sana, and their growing family as part of our family. With that, I will turn it over to Coach Salah. Thank you, Christopher. Um, I want to start off uh, by thanking the Johnson family as well as Joe jo and Jaime. I uh, really appreciate this process and uh, uh, everything that we've been able to communicate throughout the, uh, the weeks. Um, I also want to take this time to thank the 49ers family. Uh, the York family uh, has been giving me the opportunity uh, and, and so thankful for what they've done for me in my four years there. I want to thank the Shanahan family, uh, Kyle, Mandy, and uh, Mike Shanahan for the opportunity they also gave me and the support they showed throughout those four years. The players, the coaching staff, everybody that's been involved in this journey from the 49ers organization, I can't thank you all enough. Um, I also want to take this time to acknowledge my family uh, with regards to my parents, my siblings, uh, all the different family members back home who have helped me throughout this uh, journey. I haven't done it alone, and I couldn't have done it without you. I do want to recognize my wife. Uh, she's, she's the rock that I stand on. She is the, the heartbeat of our entire family, and without her, again, there's no way that I'd be here today. Uh, to our players, myself and the entire coaching staff are beyond excited to work with each and every single one of you. We're going to do this thing together to our organization. Get used to the mantra, all gas, no break. When we talk about all gas, no break, we're not talking about effort on the field. We're talking about the process at which we do, thing, do things. We're talking about the way we prepare, the way we wake up every single morning, the way we rehab, the way we communicate, the way we speak to one another. Cannot tell you enough about how excited I am to work with this entire Jets organization and understanding that when we wake up in the morning, we will all, from top down, step on the pedal and find a way to get somewhat better than we were when we, uh, when we woke up. To our fans, we embrace your passion. We embrace your expectations. We cannot wait to go on this journey with you. Please understand, we understand that we have a lot of work to do, but make no mistake, no mistake, that our goal is to win championships. And so again, I cannot wait to get through this journey with all of y'all. It's gonna be an exciting time. And I promise that you're going to love, the, love what you what all see. Thank you, Coach. At this time, we will begin the Q&A portion. As a reminder, please use the raise hand button at the bottom of your screen to be added to the queue. You will receive an on-screen notification to unmute your line. Please state your name, organization, and who your question is directed to before asking your question. Our first question comes from Brian Costello. Hi, Brian Costello from the New York Post. Uh, I had a question for Christopher and one for Robert. Um, Christopher, I guess I'll go with you first. Uh, will, you said you were open to changing the organizational structure. Will you guys change the structure or will Robert and Joe still report directly to you? Uh, that structure has changed. Uh, uh, Joe will 
report to me. Uh, uh, Robert will report to Joe. Uh, it seems a, a, a clean and simple way to do things, but honestly, not much really changes. We have a, a, a very good uh, commu uh, communication already. Uh, I, I don't think that that's going to uh, alter things here all that much, truly. And then, uh, Robert, my, my question for you is just the Jets have lost 57 games in the last five years, 35 in the last three. There's been a, a losing culture in that building for a while. What is your plan for changing that? We understand that uh, with regards to the, the, what's happened in the past. You know, what, what we do challenge everybody is to, to, to really judge us on moving forward. You know, when you look at the plan and what, we're, what we have in play, place with regards to scheme, offense, defense, special teams, and the mindset at which we're going to do it, there is an investment that's going to be made to one another. Coaches to players, players to coaches, organization to everybody. And there's an investment that's going to be reciprocated. But understanding that the all gas, no break mentality that we're going to have with how we wake up in the morning, how we rehab, how we prepare for meetings, how we take the practice field, how we're deliberate and everything we do will lead to the uh, results that you'll see on Sunday. Um, it will take time, but everything we do is going to be designed to win championships in the future. And so when we talk about all gas, no break, and that mentality, waking up in the morning, putting your foot to the pedal, uh, uh, and, and having that mindset, again, go to bed better than when you woke up. That's the mindset we're going to have. And again, we are very confident that's going to lead to championships. Our next question is from Connor. Hey guys, Connor Hughes with uh, with the Athletic. I, I got kind of a, a two parter, one for Joe and, and then one for Robert. Joe, I, I don't think you and Robert have worked together uh, in the past. So when did you kind of realize that that he was the right coach for for this job, uh, and kind of willing for you to go with somebody that you didn't necessarily know beforehand? And then Robert, I was wondering if you could address uh, Sam Darnold and and what you think of him as a player uh, and his potential future with this team. Connor, do you want me to go first or, or Coach Sala? I'll go. You're I'll go. Screen, I'll, go I'll go first. I'll uh, go first. In terms in terms of uh, Coach, you know, th this was a daunting task to, to um, uh, with this search. Um, I feel like it was all hand all hands on deck mentality, and uh, you know, just working in collaboration with Christopher, with Jaime, our staff, our football ops staff. You know, we really canvassed the the National Football League. And what kept coming back time and time again was how great of a candidate that Coach Sala was. And so when we talk about our criteria and what we were looking for in a coach, uh, he checked all those boxes, the integrity, the passion, the ability to connect. So getting an opportunity to meet him for the first time, um, it, it uh, just confirmed uh, what, what everyone had said about him. With regards to Sam, um, you know what uh, my experience would be? I, I could talk about the way we game planned uh, back earlier in the season and, and studying Sam and trying to uh, come up with a plan when we played the Jets. And what I can tell you the, about uh, with regards to Sam is that he's got an unbelievable arm talent. There's a reason why he was the number three pick in the draft. Uh, he's fearless in the pocket. He's got uh, a natural throwing motion. He's mobile. Uh, he's extremely intelligent. And, uh, and like a, he's tough as nails. Uh, uh, his reputation in the locker room is unquestioned, and so uh, ju just that in general, uh, there's a reason why he was the third pick in the draft, and you can see all those qualities on tape and around the building and the ways people, people speak about him. Our next question comes from Dennis. Hi, Robert. Dennis Wozak from the Associated Press. Uh, when you left the facility um, after the in-person interview, at what point did you know that this was the place. I, I know in your statement you said, you know, as the process went, it became clear to you that this was going to be home for you. Uh, when when did that kind of hit you, and when did you know that this was the fit for you? You know, throughout this entire process, uh, you know, I, I come from a very tight knit community uh, where uh, it's all family. Everything is so tight knit. The way people communicate, the way people have each uh, each other's back, and so. Uh, going through this process from Zoom meetings and then having the opportunity to meet Christopher, meet Joe, meet Jaime, I mean, it felt like I was back home. It felt like I was talking to my, the people in my community. There, was, there is a sense of togetherness. There is a, uh, 
everybody is communicating. There's a collaboration. There is a sense that everyone has each other's back, and there's a, uh, a, a sense of family, and uh, which is very, very important to me. And so when I left this building, uh, there was nothing more than I wanted uh, more than to have a call back to get back here. Uh, the, it, I've always believed that it's the people that make things work. It's the heart and the humility that of, of individuals that make things work. And there's no question going through this process with Christopher, Joe, and Jaime, that's what they represent. And, uh, and when you have people who have that mindset, who have the humility, who have the heart to do what's right for the organization, it's really, really hard to fail. So uh, really excited to be a part of this and, and for them to put me into their circle. And, uh, and I'm excited to get to work. Next up, Rich. Yeah, I have a two-parter for Robert. It's Rich Zamini from ESPN. Uh, Robert, just following up on Connor's question from a moment ago, uh, you spoke glowingly of Sam. So my follow to that one is, do you plan to make him your starting quarterback going into training camp? You know, there's, there's a lot of things that we have to do moving forward. Um, you know, we're, we're just getting the staff into the building. So there's so many things that we have to do from an evaluation standpoint with regards to the entire roster, not just the quarterback. Uh, to give you that answer right now would, uh, would not be fair. There's, uh, there's a lot of discussions that need to ha be had with Joe's staff and, uh, and obviously himself. And so uh, to give you that, that answer right now would be a bit premature. And my part two is, is um, Robert, how much say will you have into personnel decisions and how much control will you have over the 53-man roster? So everything uh, with regards to a collaboration mindset, uh, with regards to our communication with Joe and his staff, you know, whether or not who has control, all those different titles, uh, what's, what's been made clear is that Joe and his staff want to be collaborative and they want to communicate at all levels. And so every conversation that's had, obviously, uh, 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 with the staff and with Joe's staff, uh, there's, there's going to be a lot of discussions. There's going to be a lot of different things that are talked about. And so um, uh, obviously Joe will always have final say. But uh, I, I really, really see it in the way he's communicating. I think when you communicate at the level that will be had here, who has final say is irrelevant. Our next question comes from Pat. Hey, everybody. Pat Leonard from the New York Daily News. Uh, this question is for Robert. Robert, you were on a team that was not long ago in the Super Bowl, so you know what talent looks like. How close do you think this Jets roster is to being a winning football team? Do you think there's patience in the organization from ownership on down to rebuild a roster and make this a longer term thing? And was part of your alignment with the organization and with Joe, maybe how you're going to use such a premium draft pick to that end? Um, you know, when, when you, like I said before, there's a lot of things to dissect. You know, you can, you can look at all the uh, reports and, and read things, and obviously we game-planned against the uh, Jets earlier in the season. There's a lot of things that have to be done in the uh, coming weeks to, to really kind of give you an answer to, to where exactly we are. Um, uh, I do believe that there's a lot of talent on this roster. Um, how those different pieces fit to the schemes that we're about to uh, deploy is uh, uh, going to be decided here in the coming weeks. But... Uh, um, like I said, you know, there's, there is a, a, a collaborative effort being made, and obviously starting with uh, Christopher Johnson and, and how he wants things to be run. And so uh, time, all that stuff, it, like I said, it's all irrelevant. Uh, it's about the communication and doing things in the best, uh, uh, to the best of our ability with regards to what's best for the organization and, uh, and really giving our players everything they, uh, we can to help them be their personal best every single day. And so... Uh, that's the main focus right now, whether there's time, where we are now, it's, it's, all, it's all irrelevant uh, because as we move forward, everything we do from this day forward is to win championships. And so those things will kind of reveal itself as time goes. Bruce Beck, you have the next question. Hi, Bruce Beck, NBC4 New York. Robert, welcome. Uh, Gary Kubiak, who has played and coached in this league since uh, 1983, said of you, people want to play for him. They want to work for him. My question is, why do they want to play and work for you? Um, man, <laughs> you know what? I'll, I'll tell you what. Um, I, in, in my heart, in my heart, I do believe that uh, there's a respect level with regards to how things get done when people are uh, trying to do things together. Uh, sometimes there's that notion of coaches coach, players play, and that's I, I've never taken to that to that notion. I believe that coaches and players are in this thing together, 
I believe that the investment that coaches put in the players has to be the equivalent of the investment you put in your children. I mean, you got to invest everything you have in your heart and in your soul into those players because they're relying on you to help them be their absolute best so they can show, showcase their skills on Sunday. I think when players feel that investment and they feel that you're giving them everything you have, I think they can't help but reciprocate that, that investment and invest back in you as an individual. And so when you get that investment reciprocated and you got investments on both sides, it becomes personal. And when it becomes personal, it becomes very, very, very special. And, um, and I think that's the, the environment that we're trying to create here to where everybody in the organization is investing in one another. Because like I said, when people invest in one another, you connect on a personal level. And when that personal level is, uh, connection is made, it is, uh, it, you just feel like it's a responsibility not to let, let that person down. And so, um, you know, that's, that's kind of the mindset. That's what we want to create here. And, uh, and it, 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 takes a, it takes a lot of work to be able to get to those points. But again, there's trust involved and all that too. So um, hopefully I answered your question, but that's just, that's just, just how I see it. Our next question comes from Mark Canizero. Hey, Robert, Mark Canizero from the New York Post. Um, welcome to New York. Um, I have two questions, and one for you and one for Christopher. I'm gonna ask Christopher first. Um, if there was a moment, Christopher, uh, during the interview process with Robert, um, whether whether it was on the Zoom or the or the uh, you know the the face to face, that just made you decide that this was your guy, and 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 and, ha and what is it about him that you feel is gonna is gonna lead this organization forward? Well, uh, you know, it 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 was a slow build. I gotta say, I, I, it wasn't a single moment. Uh, we knew a lot about Robert before he, uh, we met on, on, on video, but uh, uh, everything we knew was reinforced, everything built up, and, and we knew we had, had someone special coming into the building. Uh, and when we, when we met him, it just, boy, it, did that uh, just take off. We, we, we knew we had, uh, uh, we had our coach. Uh, once he once he was in the building, it, we, we still had to go through a process, but uh, you know it, it it wasn't one thing. I, I wish I could tell you, um, but uh, it, it it's so many pieces coming together. The connection with with Joe, the the shared vision. Um, it, it this is this is going to be a, a special place going forward. And Robert. If I could uh, follow there, when you met uh, the Jets and Christopher, obviously it was during a part of the interview process where you know you were, if we're to re believe the reports, there were you, know, you had a lot of options, and uh, I'm curious as to what it was about the Jets and maybe you know what you got out of Christopher, what your impression was that made you you know make that decision pretty quickly. I uh, you know. Yeah, absolutely. It's um, I'll go back to what I mentioned earlier. You, when you meet people and you talk to people, you can't help but feel authenticity. You you can feel that, and so having that opportunity to 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 visit with them, it it didn't happen until I actually walked into the building and I had a chance to speak with Christopher and speak with Joe and speak with Jaime, and the way they interacted with one another and just observing them. Uh, and how they interacted back with me and there's that entire circle of communication and uh, I, I, you can't help but feel uh, that connection. And so, uh, like I said, when I walked out of the building, I was like, there's no doubt this is home. There was no doubt in my, my mind. I'd, uh, what, what, it just felt like home. It felt like I was back home talking to my high school friends. I mean, it was just, it was, it, it's home. And so uh, to, to go into definition on how to explain that, um, uh, the, the best way I could is to, it's like talking to family, and so I'm. I, like I said, I, I'm. I'm excited to be here. So, uh, and I'm just. I'm just humbled that they allowed me into their circle. Our next question comes from Tina. Hello, Robert. Congratulations. It's Tina Servasio from Fox Five New York, and I do have a question for Joe after this. But I would like to start with you, Robert. Um, you do already sort of have a tie to New York, um, although it is a tie to the tragedy of 9-11. It was your brother's survival. I read a lot about the story, how that um, really started your journey 
to football and it was 20 years ago. So if you could just share um, how that moment, if you feel it does connect you um, to New York, how it does and how, you know, 20 years later, your first NFL job is with a team uh, in New York. Um, if you could just share a little bit with that, that with us. No, absolutely. Thank you. Um, it, uh, you know, 9-11, obviously, it, it impacted, uh, I think everyone somehow, some ways, uh, somewhat impacted uh, from 9-11. And, uh, you know, uh, going through my, my brother's experience and the, and the tragedy that he experienced, being able to self-reflect on what I was doing at that moment and realizing that I had a passion for football uh, really triggered this whole thing. And, uh, you know, in, in 2014, we were here in MetLife Stadium, uh, won a Super Bowl with Seattle and now to be here as part of the New York Jets and, and knowing that our first game is a, a day after the 20th anniversary. I mean, it's, I'm supposed to be here and I believe that. Uh, uh, God does things for a reason and, uh, and I believe this is one of them and I'm, I'm really, really excited to be here and, and continue this journey with, the, with Jet Nation. Our next question comes from Andy. I have one for Robert and one for uh, Christopher. I'll start with Robert. Uh, Joe and Christopher said when they started the interview process that they wanted to bring in someone who could coach the entire team. So how do you plan on doing that? And will you be handling defensive play calling? Um, I'm, I'm not going to be handling play calling duties on defense. Um, got the utmost respect and confidence in Jeff Albrecht to be able to do that. Um, I'm, I'm, I share the same thoughts as they do. I, th I think the head coach and, and the message that uh, is trying to be deployed to everybody. Uh, this is a, a, an organization that has to work locked in arms and work together and, uh, and to ensure that the messaging and the way we want things done all the way across the board um, is there and maintaining that connection throughout, whether it's offense, defense, special teams, business to, to football, somehow, some way, everyone's got to find their connection to the player. and. Uh, uh, to, with the mindset that we're going to get these guys better every single day. And, uh, and to be able to have that focus and ensure that the entire organization is moving in the direction that we want, um, I, I won't be calling plays. So. And for Christopher, do you have any idea when Woody will be coming back? And can you elaborate on, on exactly what his role will be when he returns? Sure. Um, actually, Interestingly, perhaps he, he's on a plane right now coming back to the States. Uh, I think he lands in another few hours. Uh, when he is officially uh, principal owner, uh, I'm, uh, we, we aren't exactly sure. That's something that has to run through the league. But he, he will be uh, assuming his, his duties, essentially, as principal owner quite soon. Um, he will be chairman. I'm going to be vice chairman. Uh, I'm going to be uh, doing an awful lot of the of the the day-to-day -day stuff. All the final decisions will be his. Uh, but uh, there are lots of things. I mean, I've I've loved being in this building for the last four years, uh, especially, uh, uh, and I'm looking forward to continuing my involvement here. Uh, there's going to be a, a, a fair amount of continuity here. Uh, my brother and I work really well together. Uh, we enjoy each other's company. We think alike on, on, on most things, and when we disagree, we find a, find a good place to, to settle on. Uh, so I, I'm really looking forward to, to working with him. Our next question comes from Zach. Hey, uh, Zach Rosenblatt from uh, NJ.com. Just had a question for Robert. Um, jumping off uh, what Andy asked, I know he asked you about uh, defense. I was this this offense last year. I'm sure you're well aware of the stats. They were in last place in a lot of categories. Um, so I'm curious, like how how involved do you plan on being on that side of the ball, and kind of what what do you want the offense to look like in terms of philosophy and and scheme and all that kind of stuff? No, absolutely. Um, so you know, it's uh, we're hiring Mike Lafleur as our offensive coordinator. So he he's been uh, everyone's familiar with the whole Shanahan system and and what he's been able to create. Um, Mike LaFleur has been with uh, Kyle for I think eight I think he's going on eight years now of uh, professional football which he's been which has been his entire career and uh, nobody in the world knows it better than he does and uh, and so to be able to have him and to get John Benton uh, uh, along with us as run game coordinator 
uh, really excited about them being able to install the system and, the, and implement the vision that we all, we all want to see. Uh, a lot of pre-snap movement, a lot of help for the quarterback, run, marrying with pass. Uh, there's going to be a clear identity of what we're trying to accomplish down in and down out on the offensive side of the ball, defensive side of the ball, and uh, special teams for that matter. And so uh, really excited about the vision that we have in place for the offensive side. And, uh, and there's no one better in the world than, than the people that we've hired to be able to do that. So it's, uh, it's, it's going to be an exciting time for, for, the, for this uh, organization. Chris Carlin, you have our next question. Uh, this is for Robert. Robert, it's Chris Carlin from ESPN New York. I was talking to Fred Warner just a little while ago uh, about your ability to connect with players. I'm just kind of wondering what your philosophy is when you're trying to build relationships with players and, and kind of get the most out of them. And also, he said you're an incredible storyteller in, in, in trying to get your point across. I'm wondering what you know, maybe your go-to is when you're first connecting with players on that front. Um, I don't know about the stories. No, he, um, you know what? I, I, I touched on it earlier. I, players, players really want to know, really want two things from a coach. I've always felt this way. That one, they want to know that you care about their well-being. There, it's this. Everyone says it's a business. I, I get it, but it's not. This is a personal investment to people. Um, and the most important people are the ones who strap up uh, on game day and step between the lines. Um, and obviously, can you help them make plays on Sunday so they can get paid as much as possible? And that's, that is the goal of every single coach and everybody who, who has some type of impact on the players or has a connection to the players. And that is going to be the goal of this entire organization is to make sure we do everything we can to connect to their well-being and to help them make plays on Sunday so they can get paid as much as possible. And that's... You know, when you, when you look at the connection part with these players, um, there's an investment that has to be made. You've got to sell everything you can. You've got to give them everything you can. And when you do, uh, like I said, you, it, it, the reciprocation happens. And when it does, it becomes personal. And, uh, and that's all you can ask for, uh, to, to, to get this to a personal level where everybody has got everybody's back and everybody feels accountable to one another. And so um, as far as the stories go, uh, I, I got a lot of them, but <laughs> uh, one day maybe I'll be able to share a couple. <laughs> we'll take a few more questions. Our next comes from Justin. Hi, Robert. Welcome to New York. Justin Walters, PIX11 News. To be the first to do anything is a huge accomplishment. You're the first Muslim American head coach. I guess, A, what does this honor mean to you? And B, are you surprised more minority coaches haven't been hired in the league during this coaching cycle? Um, you know, uh, it, it's humbling. Uh, it is humbling when, because uh, I didn't even, I wasn't even aware of it. And um, you know, especially back home uh, where I'm from, uh, uh, Dearborn, Michigan. So uh, there's a lot of pride, and uh, so it is a very humbling uh, experience. And um, you know, when you look at a uh, an or NFL organizations, and you look at the locker room and and it's like the ultimate melting pot of different people and different races and different uh, uh, stories that get together with one possible, with one goal. And so uh, to be a part of that is, is special uh, and humbling. Um, as far as diversity is concerned, um, I know the league has been doing their absolute best to, to ensure that uh, um, minorities are included within the leadership roles of every single organization. And, and they keep putting their best foot forward with regards to uh, getting it done. And, uh, and even though the result may not be where the league might want it to be at this point, I know that the league is working tirelessly to do their best every single, every single year, recreating rules and uh, trying to um, really encourage that development. And so uh, the league's going to get it right. There's no doubt in my mind. And I, I could see them working tirelessly to do it. So. Mike Vaccaro has our next question. Hi, Robert. Mike Vaccaro from the New York Post. I'm curious, there's this perception that there's that the Jets have a reputation across the league of a certain level of dysfunction. I'm curious what you discovered as you talk to the, to the folks who run the team and if, and if you think that perception and that uh, reputation uh, in your view right now is unfair or fair? Unfair. Uh, clearly, uh, it's like I said earlier. You know, these there's there's a clear vision on what Christopher Johnson wants. Uh, um, there's a clear vision on what 
uh, Joe Douglas wants, there's a clear vision on what Jaime wants, and together that vision is very unified in, a, in the communication that they were able to express throughout this entire interview process. It's clear. There's no black. There, there's no gray area. It's all black and white on exactly what they're looking for. And uh, part of the entire going through the uh, interview cycle, uh, just listening to people talk. This is they're as authentic as anyone. And uh, and I'm again, I'm really excited to be about to uh, be a part of this thing because it's it is. You get perception, and sometimes people think perception is reality, but it's furthest from the truth. And especially when you actually sit down and, and speak with each individual. Dennis Young has our next question. Uh, hi, this is Dennis from the New York Daily News. Uh, this question is for Robert and for Joe. Um, I'm sure you saw what, what happened with the Mets with Zach Porter this week. Uh, and I was wondering if like you have like a due diligence process in place to like prevent that type of thing with happening with your hires. I think from our end, um, it, for, for anyone we bring in the building, uh, I feel like we do a great job in terms of going through background background check, uh, so, social media scrubs. Um, so I, I feel we have a, a great process in, in place. Do you speak specifically to what you do? Like, do you speak to, do you like make sure to speak to any women uh, in this process? I can't go into this, to specifics, uh, but I can tell you that we have a great process, and uh, we have we have good people that 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 handle that process. Our last question comes from Andrew. Andrew Rosario, New York Beacon. Congratulations, Robert. Welcome to New York. Two questions. Uh, the first, uh, over your years, who has influenced you the most in terms of your coaching style? And second, with the team having the number two draft pick, um, what kind of input will you give in order uh, you know, for the team to make a decision? Um, I'll, I, uh, first question, uh, first, obviously the, you know, I've had a lot of different people influence me throughout my life, you know, from my parents and the way they they raised me to my brothers and sisters, aunts, uncles, uh, and all the different coaches from Bobby Williams, giving me my first opportunity to John L. Smith, moving me to the defensive side of the ball, to Brian Kelly, um, uh, keeping me alive in the business. Uh, I can go on and on and on, but you know, my time in Seattle, um, with Pete Carroll and, Ken Norton Jr. and uh, Rocky Seto, Chris Richard, Gus Bradley, Dan Quinn, like those men uh, for a young 31-year-old with a uh, 32-year-old, whatever I was, and uh, having a, a wife with a young baby, for a man starving for knowledge and looking to grow, uh, that was probably the best situation I could have possibly have been in. Um, you know, identifying with myself, connecting to myself, and uh, really creating my own personal identity. Uh, so to answer your question on who I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna be like me, uh, and that was a challenge that Pete gave us when I, when we were young assistants. Was uh, it's easy to pick from different people and try to emulate what different people are, but in moments of adversity, your true character will always reveal itself. And so the challenge was to identify with yourself and be who you are first, because it, when adversity hits, your authenticity will shine. And so uh, to tell you who you're gonna get, you're gonna get me. And uh, and this entire organization and 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 what we're gonna try to get done is going to be designed to win championships. So, um, like I said, I'm, I'm excited. Now, and to your second part with regards to the draft, um, again, there's, there's a lot of different moving parts between now and then, and there's going to be many, many conversations with Joe and his staff and uh, how things work, uh, what we like for our scheme, and how they uh, uh, evaluate talent. And so there's a lot of different co uh, conversations that, that will take place between now and then. So to, to give you that answer would be a bit premature. 